Lost in the massive media coverage of the environmental disaster in the Gulf of Mexico is the worst part of this industrial crime. The killing of 11 men who entrusted their lives to the corporations that put them on the Deepwater Horizon oil rig and guaranteed their safety. You can be horrified by the pictures we bring you of the oil floating on the Gulf. You can feel for the birds. You can feel for the shrimpers. You can feel for the kids who just want to have a fun on a clean beach. But you should feel something more for the loved ones of the Deepwater Eleven. We in the media should never let you forget them. We should make sure that all the corporate executives responsible for these 11 deaths have to see their pictures every day, every night. Shane Roshto was a roustabout, 22 years old. He leaves his wife Natalie and his son. Roy Wyatt Kemp was a derrick hand, 27 years old leaves his wife Courtney and two daughters. Carl Kleppinger Jr. was a floor hand, a Desert Storm veteran. He leaves his wife Tracy and one son. Jason Anderson was a tool pusher. He leaves his wife Shelley and two children. Stephen Curtis was an assistant driller. He leaves his wife Nancy, a son and a daughter. Dewey Revit was a driller. He leaves his wife Sherry and two daughters. Adam Weiss was a floor hand, 24 years old, high school football star. Leaves his girlfriend and family. Blair Manuel was a mud engineer. He leaves his fiance Melinda and his three daughters. Donald Clark was an assistant driller. He leaves his wife Sheila and four children. Aaron Dale Burkeen was a crane operator. He helped get other crew members to safety in the minutes after the explosion, but could not get off the rig in time to save his own life. He leaves his wife Rhonda and two children. Gordon Jones was a mud engineer. He leaves a son and his pregnant wife, Michelle, who is due to give birth seven days from now. Just before the explosion, Gordon called Michelle. She told the Los Angeles Times, quote, his last words were, I love you. Ten minutes later, everything changed. Yes, everything changed. But the executives at BP and Halliburton and Transocean don't know that yet. They think they can get away with ducking blame in congressional hearings and wait for all of us to move on and forget these I 11 I have to say, months. though, I did not appreciate uh, what I considered to be a ridiculous spectacle uh, during the congressional hearings into this matter. You had executives of BP and Transocean and Halliburton falling over each other to point the finger of blame at somebody else. The American people could not have been impressed with that display, and I certainly wasn't. And they think they can admit missteps and keep calling a crime an accident. Not this time, not as long as I can get to a microphone. These corporations and these executives are going to be charged with wrongful death in civil cases, and they are going to settle those cases out of court because they know there is not a jury anywhere in this country who would not find for these 11 men. The only legal questions remaining are, has everything changed enough so that this time they will face criminal charges of manslaughter? And is that what it takes to get the corporations running our oil rigs, our coal mines, to at long last find their consciences? For the answer to those questions, let's bring in Mike. Pap Antonio, an environmental lawyer who's leading the class action lawsuits against BP. Mike, uh, clearly there will be wrongful death uh, cases uh, mounted here. It seems to me, uh, am I right in calling it that they won't make it a trial? They'll, they will absolutely settle these things. They'll be afraid of any civil jury here. 
Lawrence, that's great. They'll, they'll settle some. But I got to tell you something. The, the problem is, and you, and you pointed out, this company has to be concerned about more than civil problems. They have to be concerned about the criminal aspects of what's happening here. So, something happened yesterday that I think is, is critically important. When, when Obama forced BP to release the deep water video of this catastrophic oil gusher, it became apparent that this company has been lying to the American public and to the federal government from day one. And, and what's, what's happened is when this video was released, all of a sudden this, this lie becomes something that they really can't cover up. Mike, let me, get, let me get you to this, to the manslaughter question. I've been chasing this manslaughter question. It's been bothering me from the start here. What is the legal threshold that, that has to be met to bring a manslaughter case in this instance? Recklessness to the point that it almost it, it almost knocks on the edge of intent. Uh, manslaughter, when you see a manslaughter driving incident, it's not that they intended to kill somebody, but they were so reckless. They they, they were they, they just had so little attention to what they should have been doing. There was a, a reckless abandon in the way they approached the issue. That is all over this case. From day one, we started seeing it. Day one, we started hearing stories that, that at first at first blush they were almost implausible. You'd hear, you'd hear a witness call and say, this, w this is a company that drilled deeper than their permit. This is a company that, that failed to have a, a fail-safe system in place that's used all over the world. This is a company that knew hours before this thing was had, before it blew, that they had an intrinsic problem in the safety system. This is a company that knew all this and chose to ignore it because to respond would have cost them money. And when you get to the point where there's such reckless abandonment, such, such little care about human life, then you do knock on the door of something like manslaughter. And so I, let me just tell you something. I used to be a prosecutor. And, and I got to tell you, if I had the facts of this case in front of me back when I was prosecuting, I would tell you that the chances of success in a real criminal, real criminal conviction are very high. The problem we have here is we don't throw corporations in prison. The U.S. Supreme Court says we have to treat a corporation like they're a person. But who are we going to to take to prison? Are we going to take Tony Hayward, the CEO of this company, who today said he said that this was a relatively tiny problem, that, that, that it's a tiny problem because it was such a small spill in this huge body of water called the Gulf of Mexico? Are we going to put Tony Hayward in prison? In prison? The corporate structure is put in a way we can throw a man in prison for robbing a Jiffy store with a gun, but when you get a man with a briefcase who kills people for, for nothing more than sheer greed. Then Mike, we have problems with that, and we have to relive the way we look at corporate America. Mr. Carter, thank you for your time tonight. Well, thank you for having me. This was hinted at yesterday. You have experience uh, prosecuting these spillers. Is it reasonable to suspect the Justice Department has already begun compiling evidence for possible uh, prosecution? What would the parameters be? What would they be looking at? If you get it early enough, they might try to resurrect. Well, it's not only reasonable, it's, it's essential for two reasons. One, you had a tragic loss of life on that platform, plus the significant environmental harm that has been caused. Also disruption of business and the economy in the Gulf. Under the law, systems are supposed to be in place to prevent this loss of life and environmental damage. Obviously something went wrong out on that platform to cause this problem. Mm -hmm. uh, the investigation will answer those questions. And what they're going to be looking at, obviously, is the harm. We know that happened. Second thing is intent. This investigation will answer why did this happen? Was it an accident or was it the result of intentional conduct? Someone decided not to do something they were supposed to do. And thirdly, why they're going to look at this as a criminal investigation is because of the history of the target. Uh, BP has ha had a history in 2005 they had an explosion at a refinery in Texas that killed 15 people, and they were criminally prosecuted for that. For, for those reasons alone, the Department of Justice should be opening an investigation, and it would be a shock if they did not. Uh, between the explosion, and we're getting these, these awful pictures uh, as we speak of exactly what happened to that rig, at least above the surface, you have, uh, you have the, the, almost all the physical evidence is gone. You have the records missing. You have the sinking of the rig. You have everything else that you might want there. How do you, how do you go by about finding evidence to build a case? 
Well, a lot, the evidence is floating on the water. Mm. You've got uh, millions of barrels of oil on the water. So you're going to, at a minimum, you're going to have a violation of the Federal Clean Water Act, whether it's a negligent discharge or an intentional discharge. At a minimum, it's negligent. Something happened to cause that oil to spill. So you're going to have millions of dollars of potential penalties for the spill of the oil. You also have the evidence of the wildlife and the habitat of the wildlife that is floating in the water now or washing up on shore and being treated. So you have uh, wildlife violations. Now the most serious, and those are all six month violations or misdemeanors, mm -hmm. the more serious violations are the ones that could be felonies, 10 years in, in federal prison. Not just for people working on the platform, but for corporate officers. These laws specifically list corporate officers as responsible. What you would have to do is impanel a federal grand jury, which would issue subpoenas to witnesses that f both current and former employees to come before the grand jury, testify under oath, also issue grand jury doc, uh, subpoenas for documents. There would be test records, diaries, production logs, test records, uh, inspection uh, notices, all those things that you could gather now to determine whether this was an intentional violation or a negligent violation based on testing failures.